Mr. Limbrick. Thank you, President. And um, I have uh, amendments to this motion that I'd like to have circulated now, please. Member to continue. Thank you, President. The motion put forward by the government begins with a very clear justification. I quote, in order to protect the health and safety of members and parliamentary staff and reduce the risk of transmission of COVID-19, end quote. But it goes on to say elected representatives who refuse to provide proof of vaccination should be suspended from parliament. Today, the Liberal Democrats will test whether, this, whether or not this motion is really about protecting health and safety of members and staff or whether it's about power. We suspect the real reason for this motion is that the government wants to ease the passage of further legis pandemic legislation to further restrict the rights of Victorians, but we shall see. But today, during, via our amendment, we offer a better way to protect the health and safety of members and staff. Our amendment will allow members and parliamentary staff to come to work by doing a PCR or rapid antigen test. This is the safest option and is exactly what the Premier announced in a press release he would be asking of teachers and childcare workers and is already happening to workers at level crossing removal projects. If regular testing is being used for the important business of replacing level crossings, it can also be used in Parliament for the important business of representing Victorians. By having regular testing, parliamentarians and staff will be safer than if they provide their private vaccine information. Every day for months, we have heard how effective the vaccines are at preventing serious illness from COVID-19. Vaccinated people should have little to worry about. This motion seems to suggest that the government doesn't believe its own health experts. The health experts tell us that being vaccinated does not prevent transmission. It may reduce the risk, but any benefits could be overridden by vaccinated people who are infected with overconfidence and let their guard down. The only way to be reasonably sure someone is not carrying COVID is to test regularly. On the 1st of October, the Premier announced that all authorised workers, those people who are allowed the privilege of leaving their homes for work, would be required to get vaccinated. That's two weeks notice for every worker in the state who was captured by this. This is policy on the run, or perhaps public health policy panic. And with an immeasurable sense of hubris, the Premier maintained that this would cover everyone, including judges and MPs. Somebody must have since pointed out that the Premier was not all powerful and it wouldn't be possible to draft the mandate this way, that, the way that he declared it would work. So let's call this motion what it is, an attempt to save face. He declared that the mandate would cover MPs and come hell or high water, the government would make it so. I can understand some of the arguments that have been put about special treatment, but we're not arguing for special treatment. We want sensible alternatives for the whole community, just as are being adopted by level crossing workers and others across the community. My Liberal Democrats colleague Tim and I are here standing today because we are making a stand for all Victorians. We are adding a voice for thousands of distressed Victorians who have contacted our offices. And then there is the issue of human rights. Sometimes it seems that Victoria is on a mission to violate all of them. Expert in constitutional law, Dr. Ben Saunders from Deakin University, recently published an article in, on the ABC News site about how vaccine mandates infringe on our Victorian Human Rights Charter and other uh, human rights uh, documents. I'll quote, Section 10C states that a person must not be subjected to medical treatment without his or her full free and informed consent. Because vaccination is a medical procedure, forcing a person to be vaccinated against his or her will is a clear violation of this right. Section 12 states that every person lawfully within Victoria has the right to move freely within Victoria and to enter and leave it and has the freedom to choose where to live. Requiring that a person may not travel to his or her place of employment without being vaccinated limits this right. Section 13 states that a person has the right to not have his or her privacy unlawfully or arbitrarily interfered with. Requiring a person to disclose his or her vaccination status to an employer or a government agency potentially limits this right. 
Section 14 states that every person has the right to freedom of thought, conscience, religion and belief, and that a person must not be coerced or restrained in a way that limits his or her freedom to have or adopt a religion or belief in observance or practice. I end quote. And to top it all off, today's motion infringes a new human right. Section 18, the, the right to participate in public life. As Dr Saunders correctly points out, the Charter does allow rights to be limited in certain circumstances. However, the ability to limit the right to not be subjected to medical treatment without full, free and informed consent is totally out of step with the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, which states that this right is non-derogable, meaning it cannot be limited in any way. The amendments that I will move on behalf of the Liberal Democrats will do more to protect the health and safety of members than, tokenist, than this tokenistic motion proposed by the government and apparently supported by the Liberal Party. And speaking of the Liberal Party, I would like to point out that those who vote in favour of this motion will demonstrate that the, that the Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, was being untruthful when he promised vaccinations would be truly voluntary. Vaccinated members could, and yet might, contract COVID and bring it into Parliament. If our amendments are not passed, there is every possibility that despite this motion, Parliament sittings could end up being a super spreader event. Our amendment is a compromise that respects people's privacy while addressing and improving health and safety. This is the kind of compromise that we should be making throughout Victoria so that people making choices about their own bodies are not left feeling like second class citizens. Today and every day, the Liberal Democrats are making a stand because coercion is wrong and consent matters. We are making a stand for all Victorians. Having voted for it already in the lower house, we know already that ne neither major party truly cares about consent or human rights. Many have tried to smear us as extremists, when in reality, we have merely been defending basic human rights. If this is the reason that we are to be suspended from parliament, Victorians would be right to ask the question, who are really the extremists?